What's going on, everybody? It is May 18th. It is a Monday. Hope you're doing well. So we're going to talk about Jefferson Pierce and his creator, Tony Isabella, who is once again having a big spurg out on social media because he doesn't like the way the character has been handled. Uh, this is like his second or third time acting like this over the same book. It's really funny. I'm going to get to the current writer of the book, who's actually a good dude, and I think deserves a lot of praise for the way he treats customers versus somebody like Tony Isabella, who's very toxic and probably drives customers away. Though we talked about the comic book industry several times on this channel and on my other channel. Uh, many of these professionals see themselves as rock stars when that's not really the world they live in anymore. A lot of comic pros used to be seen as rock stars, especially in the 90s. But nowadays, if I were to ask even 2,000 people, I would bet all of them would say they have no idea who Tony Isabella is. Uh, these people think that they're huge, huge rock stars, like I said, when really they're like D-level celebrities, if even that. Not all of them can have the status of a Rob Liefeld or a Jim Lee or an Ethan Manskyver or a Sean Gordon Murphy or, you know, the great one, Stan Lee, who everybody knows, you know, most people don't get that kind of level in the comic book industry. Most people are just nobodies. And I don't know when they're going to understand that. So when they sit there and think that they can shove political opinions on people and act like crazy weirdos on Twitter, uh, all they do is really drive customers away. It's a partial, partially a reason why comics are in the toilet. But once again, Tony Isabella shows why people see comic pros as toxic mostly and why they're big babies. So let me go over what's going on here. So Tony Isabella, co-creator and writer of Black Lightning, is not happy with the way his character is being portrayed in Batman and the Outsiders. He doesn't like loathe, might be the appropriate term, Black Lightning's possible romantic relationship with Katana in the series. So what is he referring to? He's referring to the book Batman and the Outsiders. So... This is a spin-off book, you know, it's like it's a bat book, but it's it's not a it's, you know, a side book. So you have a bunch of other characters, but it's a team that's been around for a long time, Batman and the Outsiders. That's been a, a series on and off for a long time at DC Comics. And it's ongoing again right now and Black Lightning is like the leader of the team. Tony Isabella freaked out about that. He didn't like that book. He's like, Black Lightning, he serves no man. Batman's toxic. He had a big spur out about this like last year. It's like, dude, like Black Lightning is the leader and Batman kind of sees him as like an equal and stuff. You know, like he went to him and said, listen, I need you, man. I need you. You're a teacher. I'm not a very good teacher. Come mentor these kids. Like, because it's a team of younger characters mostly. It's a decent book. Uh, Brian Hill does some pretty good stuff. He's the guy writing it right now. It's not my favorite work by him, but it's it's an okay book compared to a lot of other stuff. I think it's all right. You might enjoy it if you check it out. So he didn't like that Black Lightning was the leader of the team, but still served under Bruce Wayne or something. And he went on all big like he went on a big rant, calling it like kind of like a subtle hint that that's rashish and all this stuff. Uh, Tony's crazy, okay. And one thing that I wanted to make a point of when I made when I decided I was going to make this video was like. I want you to think of this behavior before we get into his rant on why he doesn't like Black Lightning hooking up with Katana. Um, I want you to think of this behavior versus like what Stan Lee did and even the extent of the response for the writer of this book because we're going to get to him too. He actually comments on all of this. So I want to tell you a story about Stan Lee. Uh, this goes back to Superior Spider-Man when... Dan Slott decided he was going to, you know, play a joke on everybody and say that Peter Parker is not coming back to life. He's gone. Uh, Doc Ock, who took over his body at the time, is the new Peter Parker. Deal with it. You know, uh, everyone knew that Spider-Man was going to come back, but a lot of people didn't like the story. But um, Stan Lee responds and he's like, you know, it's my birthday and Marvel kills my Peter Parker. Like he made a joke about it. It was a good reaction. You know, he never he never had a, a big flip out. Like, this is why a lot of people liked him, because he's always, you know, a good dude. I don't know what he was like privately. You know, I think, you know, I, I've never, I don't really know him, but I know on his public image, 
Stanley is very liked and very nice, and uh, that's what he's going to be remembered for next to his creations. And then you go to somebody like Tony and Isabella, who has comments like this. So uh, he doesn't like that Black Lightning is hooking up with Katana, which is this character right here. He doesn't like that. Uh, he thinks that Black Lightning should always be hounding his ex-wife or something. So anyway, he classified Batman and the Outsiders as rancid and upbraided the change between Jeff and Lynn. And here's his response over finding out what happens in the book. F DC Comics and everyone involved in their rancid Batman and the Outsiders book. Anyone who understands Jefferson Pierce knows Lynn is his one true love. <laughs> and it gets worse. Now, here's my response to that. I don't know a lot about Black Lightning. I don't. Uh, I know him from this book and, you know, a few other appearances. Uh, my response is like, so first off, he called this toxic. My response was, well, a lot of people that like Batman are finding the character for the first time thanks to him being in this book and so on and so on. Uh, I did a little bit of looking into this before I did the video, and it, it seems that him and his, his, him and this, and Lynn Pierce are not even, you know, together. They're like not in a relationship anymore. Uh, maybe that'll change, but, you know, things are done for creative reasons. I think back to the new 52 when Wonder Woman and Superman were in a relationship. Now you can say, and you would be right. Lois Lane is Superman's true love. Okay. Um, that still ended up coming back. Like they did get back together and then they had John and the DC rebirth and that's a whole thing. But my point is like things change for a minute. They always go back to how they, how they were in comics. This is a really very immature reaction to this and very strange and it just shows you how immature comic book creators are for him to act like this so a lot of people didn't like wonder woman and superman being a couple it didn't last it was done for a little bit they went back to him and lois being together i'm sure this will change too it's really not that big of a deal but man to freak out like this this is why I made the comparison to Stan Lee. Like, Stan Lee made a joke about it when they took out Peter Parker for a little while. Like he made a joke. Did he, did he like what happened? He probably didn't like it. But did he go on a big, like, social media meltdown like Tony? No, he didn't. So it keeps going here. And he says this. I, I'm guessing this is a reaction to uh, <laughs> comments that he got on his post, which was a completely stupid move on his part. I'm taking the next couple of days off from the internet. I'll figure I'll miss at least some of the clueless trolls who think the creator of an iconic character should just shut the F up when he and the character were disrespected by others. So I'm guessing some people were like, whoa, chill out, dude. It's not a big deal. <laughs> and this was his response. Clueless trolls uh, don't bow down before this iconic creator uh, who made this character? How dare you disagree with me? It's a really good. It's a really good showing for how these people act. Uh, calling people trolls, and you know he's so great because he created this character, and so on and so on. And then he says this. I think I'm done with comics, and maybe with any kind of online presence. That would probably be a good move to be done with at least the online presence. I don't know what you're doing in comics at the moment, uh, but <laughs> this is a really stupid move by you. And then he says, update. I'm taking the weekend to think about what I want to do going forward. Right now, I'm considering throwing in the towel. There's got to be better things I can do with my energy, passion, and talent. The ego on this guy. I, I mean, energy, passion, and talent. Well, you clearly do need something to do with your energy because this ain't a good outlet for it. Uh, why don't you put it towards uh, writing good books or something instead of freaking out because... Uh, the creator of the book decided to do, use a romance plot for two of his characters. It's really not that big of a deal. Now, I, I will say, you know, I've never put out a comic book yet. I do plan on it. Uh, but I've never created something and had somebody else handle it. But also, <laughs> this happens all the time to creators of characters in comics. Other people take over their original characters. And I can, I, I think I can say that none of them have had meltdowns like Tony Isabella. I think most people can handle it a little bit better. Uh, you don't own Black Lightning. Oh, DC Comics owns him. 
So he says he was going to get offline, and then that turned out to be not true. He says, picture someone who never created a damn thing slamming someone who has actually created things. Then picture me rolling my eyes. So what's going on here? So he's calling people trolls. People are probably making fun of him for acting like a big baby. And he doesn't like that, so of course he calls them trolls and then starts making fun of them because they didn't have the opportunity to create characters at DC Comics. Now, here's a professional. So here's the guy who's writing Batman and the Outsiders. Okay, uh, This is Brian Edward Hill, a very professional professional comic pro, very, very nice to people, uh, writes good works too. He's actually talented. Here's his responses to someone acting like a horse's Irish when uh when they're talking about him. So this is the guy he's blasting right now. Now look at how he handles this situation. Got some DMs about Tony Isabella. Let me be clear. I have no animosity towards Tony whatsoever, and obviously he's entitled to his opinion, but isn't everyone isn't going to like my writing or me as a person, and that's absolutely fair. No harm, no foul. We're living through an incredibly difficult time, and the last thing I'd want to do is take is take comics, what should help deliver us from conflict into the mud because an artist I respect takes issue with what I'm doing. That's just going to happen in this business. I generally appreciate everyone who reads my work and shows me support. It means a lot to me, but please don't attack Tony on my behalf or anyone that doesn't like my work. That's not necessary and that's not helpful for our culture. That's all I have on this one. Take care. This is the second time Tony has went after Brian Edward Hill, by the way. And the last time it happened, this was his response. So here you have a very mature creator, very one, one of the very few, by the way, uh, that's professional. After getting attacked like this, this guy acting like a big baby, calling him toxic and all kinds of stuff and rancid and all this nasty stuff. Professional clown right here. This is a clown. This is a professional. So this really just, to me, highlights the the idiots in the comic book industry. And I like showing you guys this stuff and talking about it. Cause one, I find it interesting watching these people melt down over some nonsense and it just helps show kind of just where the comic book industry is also. And I don't know, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it won't. I'm not holding my breath past couple of years. The industry has just really went into the toilet. We'll see if it changes. If more creators would act like Brian Hill here, and be professional and put out good work at the same time. I think that the the medium could get a lot better, but unfortunately, the majority of them act like this goofball Tony. So I'm not holding my breath. Anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please share the video. Throw a like up if you would. Make sure you still subscribe. Subscribe for your new. Hit that notification bell, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out. Also, take a moment. Make sure you're still subscribed to the channel. Uh, there's something going on right now, and they've been unsubscribing people. So just take a second and double check on that and subscribe if you're new.